On April 21, 1820, Danish physicist, Hans Christian Ørsted, noticed that, a steady current carrying wire, can deflect a nearby magnet. If, the direction of the electric current changed, the magnet, appeared to get deflected, towards the other side. After various tests, and experiments, he summarized that, a steady current carrying wire, produces a steady magnetic field, around it. To determine the direction of the magnetic field, think about holding the wire with the right hand. In this case, the thumb should be, towards the current. This produced magnetic field, will be in the direction, of other four fingers. Thus, Ørsted was also able, to show us the direction of the magnetic field. Still, he couldn't give any idea, about the amount of magnetic field, generated in this procedure. But, later in this year, two French physicists, Jean-Baptiste Biot, and Félix Savard, gave the complete mathematical tool, to calculate the magnetic field. Thus, it is known as the biot savard law. In this animation video, we shall first consider, the scalar form of the biot savard law. And, thereafter, discuss the full vector concept on this. To build a realistic concept, on biot savard law, let us first imagine a wire. It carries a current of amount, I. Also, imagine a point, P, near the wire. All portions of the wire, have their contributions, in generating a magnetic field, at this point, P. A, is an arbitrary point, on the wire. A portion of the wire is taken, about the point, A. This portion is named, DL. Let us concentrate, on this portion of the wire, DL, about the point, A. Distance between point A, and, point P, is R. We shall now, calculate the magnetic field at point, P, due to this small portion of the wire. So, let's start. If, the produced magnetic field at P, is dB. Then, biot savard law says, dB is proportional to, I, the amount of current flowing through the wire. To the length, of the portion of the wire, which is, dL. 2. Sine theta, where, theta is angle, formed by, dL and, R. R is the distance, AP. And, dB is inversely proportional to the, square of, R. Summing up all these, we get the complete scalar form of biot savard law, which is dV equals mu zero by four pi into I dL sine theta by R square. Mu zero is the magnetic permeability of free space. Here, in this case, the direction of the magnetic field is not clear. To get its direction, we need to explain the vector form of the law. And here it is. The vector form of this law, is written like this. Note that, there are, arrows, over the letters of, db, dl, and, r. They indicate that, there are three vectors in this equation. You must be aware that, any vector has two parts. Magnitude, and, direction. On this page, this arrowhead, m, is a vector. Its value, or magnitude is, m and cap m is its direction for example let the gravitational force acting on a 1 kilogram object be f this vector f has two parts first one is its value or magnitude which is about 9.8 newton and the second one is its direction which is downwards or towards minus cap z direction after noting all these, the biot savard law can be written like this. Here, dL, and cap dL, are the magnitude, and, direction of the vector, dL, respectively. And, R, and, cap R, are the magnitude, and direction of the vector, R, respectively. The direction of dB, is the cross product of, cap dL, and, cap R. 
If we calculate the cross product, we get sine theta into cat dB, where cat dB is the direction of the vector dB. And it is perpendicular to the plane that contains vectors dL and R. So, we understand that cat dB is perpendicular to this plane. But, to which direction? Upwards or downward? To realize direction of a cross product, imagine a right-handed screwdriver. Almost all of us are aware of a right-handed screwdriver. On a horizontal plane, if we rotate the screwdriver in clockwise direction, the screw should go downwards. That is, clockwise rotation yields downwards direction. Again, if you rotate the driver in anti-clockwise direction, the screw moves upward. Thus, anti-clockwise rotation gives upward direction. In this cross product, we need to rotate from the first vector, dL, to the second one, R. Of course, through the shorter angular path. And thus, we get its direction to be downward. Actually, two angles are there. Between the vectors, dL and R. One of them is smaller. And a larger another one. We are to move through the smaller angle. Hence, we get a clockwise rotation here. Thus, the direction of this product vector is downward. Now let's change the direction of the electric current. In that case, the direction of dL will be opposite. And angle between them is pi minus theta. Multiplying cap dL cross cap R, we get sine pi minus theta into cap dB. Sine pi minus theta is equal to sine theta. And the direction of the dB is now upwards. Thus, if we switch direction of the current, the direction of dB also changes. This time it should be completely opposite to its previous direction. Hope you realize that law. Please reply if you understand this topic.